welcome once again, Mr. Warren Hayes here, Bell to Bells, all that jazz, and I am thrilled right now to be joined by a couple of women who are at the top of their game right now, the current NWA Women's World Tag Team Champions, Marty Bell and Allison Kay, also known as The Hex. Marty, Allison, thank you very much for being here. Well, thank you for thank having you know, us, guys. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> Jinx. Uh, it's because we're a tag team. We kind of we kind of do this all the time. Uh, but I will say, it does not get old uh, hearing hearing that hearing uh, you know the NWA World Women's Tag Team Champions. I it's been. Oh look at that! Look oh, at wow. that! I was like. Oh. I was like, they, they didn't even tell me they had them on hand, and Marty sort of shifts around and like, hey, it's like oh, <laughs> I know it's been it's been uh, a couple of months now, and it still does not it, it does not get old hearing that at all. So, well, that's fantastic, and I mean, look, it, what a way to get back into wrestling, right? Like, uh, technically, you know, twenty twenty, it was what it was, right? You, you know, everything being shut down it was uh, a di I wouldn't want to say a disaster for everyone, but you know, every let's say people got creative. Let's put it that way. Uh, and, uh, you know, 2021 feels like everything's coming back in force. We're having live crowds back. The indies are back. Um, it's I, I, It's got to feel good just to be back wrestling, right? It, it really is. It's it, it's mind-blowing to think about it because I know that uh, – I, I, I don't know if I can speak for Allison and I on th in this case, but I know that there were lots of times during 2020 when I was thinking, like, is this it for me? Am I done? Really? You know. Uh, actually, I know that we both had those conversations where we're like, you know, are we going to have to start from zero? Are are we, what, what's going to happen? I know 2020 brought a lot of questions. And so, like you said, we had to get very creative and that's how the Hex was born. Uh, Allison, tell me, tell me, you know, because you guys, you know, you've obviously done some, some stuff individually quite a bit, you know, Allison, you've been Amongst other things, a cornerstone of blood sport, right? Uh, you know, the, on their their women's side, you know, kicking kicking the teeth in of you know Masha Slamovich, dropping and, bows, dropping bows, exactly. <laughs> and uh, and you on your end, uh, Marty, you know, amongst other things, you know, you've wrestled in SWE, you know, challenged Diana for the uh, for the Impact uh, Knockouts Championship. Uh, tell me, Allison, how did the Hex come to be throughout all of this then? I mean, Marty and I have been best friends for years now, and it was just a conversation we were having. It's the middle of the pandemic, and we're like, we want to establish a tag team. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, like, one specific moment where we were like, this is it. It was just kind of a conversation we had continually had over months, I would say. And then we just started brainstorming, and then eventually brainstormed to a point where we're like, oh, this can really be a thing. We can really do this. And I distinctly remember jotting down names for a tag team on a paper towel i don't know why i always take notes on paper towels i think they're just there i'm like on facetime with marty and i'm just ripping whatever i can write on and it always happens to be a napkin or a paper towel so i want to find that paper towel it's probably around here somewhere but i remember writing down all these different words we were kind of tossing back and forth like what can our tag team be called and we kept coming up with different uh puns i guess or play on words for hex for the hex the hex girls the hex effect all these different things that included hex um a bunch of other words too that we we're kind of tossing around and eventually we we're like why don't we just be the hex and we can use all those other words for our signature moves or our uh finishing moves things like that Merch. we've been using them for a lot of captions lately if you haven't noticed mm -hmm. a lot of um hex puns play on words with you know we're here to extinguish the competition uh we're gonna execute on our plan <laughs> very like excited that. about this the best thing about that is that i feel like fans have really connected with it um i actually have someone who keeps commenting in spanish different words and putting hex in it in spanish and it's just the funniest thing and i love that it's it's transcending just our wrestling fans it's going into a little bit further than that it's going into you know people Hex is not a word in Spanish, but all of a sudden it has become <laughs> one because of this. And so it's been really, it's been really awesome. We knew that uh, we wanted to to continue to work together because one thing that we have said about the last year, it's shown us like how much more fun things are when you're doing it with your friends. You know, we had a chance to be together at Impact uh, for a little bit of time, and obviously we've gotten a chance to work on the indies mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. But man, we're like, what if we can literally just do this? everywhere what if we can take 
our friendship and our natural chemistry and put that into the ring, put that into promos, put that into interviews and, you know, knock on wood, I would say so far, so good. Yeah, well, so far, so good. Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, going into this big women's only pay-per-view, right? And coming out, uh, coming out uh, tag team champions. I think, I think that's pretty good. Um, and, uh, well, I, I mean, let's talk about the NWA a little bit, right? Since they've been putting on, you know, a strong showing for, for women's wrestling and like power. Uh, Marty, why don't you start? How did it feel to be at, at Empower, you know, at the chase, you know, the whole history behind the NWA? Like it was a, it was a pretty big moment, right? So Allison and I, uh, both left the NWA during the pandemic, during 2020 and, uh, what better way for us to come back than at an all women's pay-per-view uh, at the legendary chase. And then not just that, but also get a chance to right away challenge for these titles and literally add our name into the history books. That is something that can never be taken away from us. Mm -hmm. We were literally building our legacy uh, as we go along. I saw the other day NWA made a post of like uh, uh, NWA power started two years ago. And so it listed like the top five uh, the last five champions, you know, Allison being one of them uh, for the women's title, the last five, uh, the men's, the TV title. And then the last slide was just a picture of us because there is nobody else that can claim these titles uh, in the last 28 years. I believe it is 28 or 38. I always, I always get confused. Since 83. Yeah, exactly. So it's been a very, very long time. So I, I know for us, it was extremely, extremely special. Uh, we've talked about this so many times. It's hard to describe the energy that was inside of the chase. And uh, we also had a chance to wrestle on, on 73, but getting a chance to do Empower, I, I, it, it's really, really hard to put into words. And even winning the titles, I feel like it took a while for that to even hit me and for it to be like, oh, wait, like that just happened. Like it, it really did take me a little bit to, to really like understand the magnitude of what that pay-per-view meant for women's wrestling, for pro wrestling in general, not mm -hmm. just women's wrestling, actually. Because, you know, uh, 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 one of the comments I think that's that, that spread around most, you know, after the show, after watching it, is that people were saying this was a great pay-per-view, right? It was a great show. They weren't saying, oh, it was a great women's show. You know what I mean? You know, and I think that's always something moving forward that's really important. Uh, it's nice to see, you know, that language sort of, change and modify and you mentioned it marty right like yeah it's been it we're we're inching close to 30 years since these titles were were deactivated you know and depend depending on who you you talk about to, who you talk to sorry you know it's either like joyce grable and wendy richter who were the last holders or penny mitchell and velvet mcintyre right and those are names allison right that's <laughs> You know, like just Not saying them sort of sort yes. of gave me chills and I don't, you know, I can't wrestle worth a lick, you know, it's like. It's, we're actually approaching 40 years. It's about 37, 38, depending on what month it was actually that 40? they deactivated. We're uh, I'm terrible at 40 math. years. 40 years. I'm terrible yes, at math. Yes, I've right. just been saying since 1983. They can do the math themselves because people, some people say 37, some say 38. I forget what month it was exactly that they were deactivated, but we're approaching 40 years. And man, the Empower it really was such a magical show. And I feel like it sounds so cliche to throw that word around, but it really was like just how it felt. It wasn't just winning the championship. It was the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was just something in the building. It wasn't, it couldn't have been because I think a huge part of that, aside from winning the championships with my best friend on this big all women's pay-per-view and the whole pay-per-view just killed it. It was the crowd. Right. The crowd made that atmosphere and they made it so special for us. And I just want them to know that i want wrestling fans to know that like you make the atmosphere at a show matches can be killing it left and right from top to bottom but if the crowd isn't there it changes the entire feeling of the show and the crowd was there for the entire show and of course i would give credit to the talent i would like to think that it's because we did a great job but it really is like a we're like working together almost and when the crowd is just up there and they just want to be into everything it just makes everything so much better and so much more just for everyone involved not just the wrestlers not just the fans like when the when the fans are having that much fun, we have more fun than we already are. That no, and, and you can tell, and and I think it was especially visible in your match. I mean, you, you know, with Kylan King and and Red Velvet, which I, you know, I think the four of you had fantastic chemistry. It was it was a blast to watch. Um, did did you know like how how did it, um, when did you learn that the women's tag team titles were going to be reactivated, for lack of a better word? 
I actually had a conversation uh, with Mickey James, which um, I will say it never, ever stops. Like, no, she doesn't. <laughs> well, no, like, listen, if you know me, you know how I feel about Mickey James. Like, Mickey James is like, man, they always say, like, don't meet your heroes, but I'm so glad that I got to meet Mickey James. Uh, and I, it's crazy to think about that the fact that we've developed this friendship with her that goes beyond just her being a mentor or goes beyond her technically being our boss, you know, at times. And so, like, having my phone, you know, light up and seeing Mickey James on my phone, I'm like, <laughs> All right, well, this is cool. And so we did talk, you know, we did talk to her and uh, as we were getting, as as she was inviting us to the pay-per-view, because that's basically how it happened. She reached out to us to invite us to the pay-per-view and then told us like, hey, just so you guys know, Billy is uh, bringing back the NWA women's tag team titles. And oh, so it was Billy's call. It was, yes, okay. it was, uh, it was Billy's idea. It was Billy's idea to bring us back as well uh, and bring us back together as a team, which I think uh, made it even more special for us. Um, you know, I like, can just, I can close my eyes and distinctly remember the moment that, you know, both of us stepped to the curtain that first time and, and how amazing, how exciting it was. And to know that it was for such a prestigious title, the NWA is a name that everybody recognizes. Uh, even people who, you know, a lot of people at my gym who don't know pro wrestling, uh, when you say the NWA, especially I live in Missouri now. You bring up the NWA mm -hmm. and right away it's like, oh yeah, I, I remember that. I used to watch that on TV or, or whatever. And so it was Billy's call to bring that back. And obviously we are, are very, very excited that we got the chance to, uh, to, to be a part of, of, of reinstating these titles. I mean, and, and I think it's interesting, Marty, that, you know, you, you talk about being excited about meeting, you know, Mickey James and working with her. And I mean, I mean, you guys are, are vets nonetheless, you know, you've got like 12, 13 years experience, both, you know, um, Allison, when, when it was time to get to work at Empower, were, were there any like I know, you know of, of Gail Kim was involved in there. You've worked with Gail before. Uh, I think Jazz was there as a producer. How, how did it all come together that day of working and putting the matches together? Yes, it was Gail Kim. Jazz Medusa was also there. Oh, Medusa too. That's right. And then Mickey, but Mickey was also doing other things. You know, um, we got in the day before, so we were able to you know take in the atmosphere the day before it wasn't all we it, it's kind of nice to go in the day before and you get to see the ring you get to get in the ring a little bit feel it out see the the venue see the the entrance ramp i don't know why that's always like a huge point of anxiety for me i'm like i need to see where we're gonna be walking out because i've been on random shows usually like indie shows where you're about to go through the curtain you're like wait i didn't actually see where the curtain is i didn't see what's on the other side of the curtain is there, a <laughs> Are there stairs down, down yeah is it gonna just drop off if you're like rushing throughout the day, you don't get a chance to actually go through the curtain and see. That's important. So do that. It's it just one less thing you have to stress about if you're about to walk through the curtain. Um, but yeah, we got to do all that the day before. And I think that helped a lot. So we could really just kind of focus on our match and, and get all that other little little um, anxieties out of the way, if you will. Well, there you go. And, and it was a fantastic, like I said, it was a fantastic match. And Marty, you you you'd recently had some tag team gold, right, over in in Shine, right? How does Allison stack up as a championship tag team partner? I mean, she's your friend and all, but you know, now it's, but it's time to work. Don't tell her I said this. Okay. No, um, you know, AK and I have such a natural chemistry, um, and I think it's one thing that people have said to us a lot is it looks like we're having fun. It looks like we're having fun and that has been probably what's been the most important for us is that no matter the situation no matter where we're wrestling in front of who we're wrestling uh what the match is whatever it is we are going to find a way to enjoy ourselves because this is something that we love wrestling is something that we love we would not be doing this for as long as we have you know um, unless you really loved it this is there you man like i don't even know how Wrestling, you know, has broken both of our hearts so many times. We've had so many highs. We've had so many lows, both together and separately. And we keep coming back. There's something that keeps drawing us back in. And it's our love for wrestling. And we hope that every single time that we step into the ring, you can tell that we genuinely want to be there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something 
you know, both of us are really good at, at bouncing ideas off each other. It definitely feels like a partnership uh, with everything we do, whether it's inside of the ring, outside of the ring, when it comes to, you know, planning our gear, planning our merch, everything. We've always wanted to make sure that we can blend our personalities really well. And I think that we are doing a pretty darn good job at it. Um, and we're only going to keep getting more and more comfortable. It's, it's, I know, AK, you can touch upon this a little bit again, but people are very surprised to know that we've only been teaming for a year. We've been, you know, best friends for so long. We've known each other for so long. We've been known each other for over a decade. So people just assume that we've had a ton of tag matches. We've had a ton of experience together, but Empower was what, our fourth and fifth match or third and fourth? I think third and fourth. Our third, third and fourth, fourth tag, tag match, match. Wow. ever, ever. So, you know, I, I just think what we're gonna be doing in a year. Think about, you know, how much more confident how much more we're going to flow in in a year when we're uh when we're doing this you know together still we even uh made sure we were both wearing black shirts today for this interview see uh, uh, see it's <laughs> yeah. the small it's always the details right there's it's always in the details <laughs> i love um, the small details <laughs> i've got I, i've got just a couple of more questions i yeah i i don't want to keep you on too long but there's two things i really want to ask you before we we move on like yeah, of course, you know, we're all excited. You got the titles. We're excited that, you know, uh, NWA is bringing that legacy back. But of course, you know, they're, you know, being, you know, in wrestling and seeing, you know, how, knowing how things have gone in the past, you know, my question to you and whoever wants to field it is, how committed do you feel NWA is to women's wrestling and women's, you know, and especially the women's tag team championships moving forward? I feel that bringing back a whole set of championships is is a pretty clear indication of dedication um i also felt uh since i had started working with nwa in 2019 that they i really do feel that billy uh, feels committed to women's wrestling even with the women's world championship i felt that way the whole time i was there um i feel that way now so i i feel i mean i'm not going to speak for marty but i feel uh pretty confident <laughs> i i've i've got to agree um we have giving empower the platform that he did and not just we were we set the we set the tone for that weekend like mm -hmm. if god forbid empower had not done well it would have like it would have really put a damper on things on 73 like you know the biggest pay-per-view of the year for the nwa and i can confidently say that we killed it and uh you know we there's possibly an empower uh nwa Empower Power episode coming up soon. Oh, interesting. You know, uh, uh, Allison and I are getting to defend uh, the titles uh, again in just a few weeks here in, in, in Kentucky. And I think another thing that's really important to us is to for people to understand that we don't want this world title to just to be called a world title just for fun. This is something that we want to take everywhere. And Billy has basically given us that green light. Like, Anybody, anybody, anywhere, you know, who's willing to step up, we are 100% ready <laughs> to take them on. And to me, that is that is also, like, dude, like AK said, man, you don't bring back a championship, like two championships, if you don't have plans, if you don't want to keep seeing your women's division growing. And it's awesome seeing all the girls that keep getting added to the NWA roster and I'm just excited. I, I know that there's going to be a lot of really good things coming for the women's division uh, at MWA. And, you know, we we keep, t you know, there's a lot of people doing some great things with their women's division. You know, I think, you know, and, and on the indie circuit as well, there's lots of fantastic stuff. Uh, you know, PWI this year has raised the, the, the women's list from 100 to 150. You know, there's always these, feels like there's always these incremental changes, but you can't, but not hear the stories from women in wrestling for decades at this point saying you know that they have to scratch and claw for everything that they that they have you know like if the bar if the bar is here they have to go they have to go a little above to you know just to prove themselves do you feel that's still a thing or again has it gotten better i do feel that it's gotten better absolutely it's gotten better when i think about when i first started wrestling women were still very much a special attraction mm -hmm. in the sense that that's how it was actually billed on the poster it would say special attraction match and uh, i remember being on shows where they would have uh cat fights or like mud wrestling still yeah. as like the intermission like things like that that i haven't seen in a long time i'm sure it happened somewhere but i absolutely think that it's gotten better however 
this is entertainment. And I think that there will always be scratching and clawing involved. There will always be people that are, you know, trying to make it to the top. There will always uh, be that level of competition, but in the sense of, has it gotten better for the women? Yes. Is there still a lot of room to grow? Absolutely. Mostly I would say the one that sticks out to me off the top of my head is the pay gap. That's really in the world, okay. but absolutely in wrestling as well. Um, I remember talking to someone outside of wrestling about this and they were like, well, that's just how it is. That's how it is in the world. And I'm like, do, do you not see the problem with that though? Like this is a problem. It's a problem. So that I would say is the biggest issue on the top of my head right now. I think it's very exciting to see. And, and some people might say like, oh, well, you know, certain promotions are just jumping on the bandwagon to have all women's pay-per-views, this, that, and the other. But it's like, no, man, we've just, we just continue to prove that women can create amazing pro wrestling, not just, mm -hmm. and like I said before, it's not just women's wrestling. At this point, it is pro wrestling. I love being on shows and knowing that we're, I was just on a show, you know, this past weekend, there were two women's matches and one mixed tag match. That's amazing. That's at least six women that got an opportunity to perform where actually, no, I'm lying. It was three. There were three women's matches on the show and one mixed tag. So we are talking about nine women being on the show. And exactly, it wasn't just a special attraction match. It wasn't just, let's give the girls these five minutes. No, let's let us let's let these girls go. How long can you guys wrestle for? Go ahead and wrestle. And, and I feel like that's very, very important. And it's just, uh, it's just a sign of the, the, the times changing. And people, not just the times changing, but the wrestling industry catching up and seeing like, wait, women, women can be a draw. Women can mm -hmm. sell, you know, pay-per-views, t-shirts, uh, whatever it is. And I, I feel like it's just going to keep getting better and better. The quality of wrestling is just getting better and better. The girls that are coming in now are like, they seem like they're younger. They're, they're more athletic. They're more ready for TV. Like you have girls that literally they're having their second or third matches on pay-per-views on television and killing it. And so I feel like, that. yeah, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> good on that. I'm glad I got to have all my really, really bad matches, like in front of nobody, uh, you know, that pressure's not there, but it, I think it's just, it's just a, a sign of the times. And it's just going to, it's just going to keep showing that women's wrestling is going to continue to grow. And it's, it's eventually it will just be pro wrestling. And, and I do think that, I think there are some promotions that are like kind of hopping on the bandwagon, but I think it's also transparent when they do. I think that when it's not authentic, you can feel it. And um, like NWA, I feel did it so well where they looked at the quality of the product and they said, oh, you guys just killed it. We're going to make you the main event. That's what they did with me and Thunder Rosa mm -hmm. uh, after hard times. They saw our match at hard times. And then the next, I believe it was the next week. I mean, taping wise, it was the next day, but mm -hmm. I think it was the next week they aired uh, Thunder Rosa and I part two for the main event of that episode of power because of our performance. So it wasn't like, it, it didn't feel like some weird, um, let me just capitalize on this because this is what's selling. It felt like, oh, you guys outperformed. So you, you're going to be main event. Yeah, just as simple as that. It, it really does feel like, like Billy is watching and he is, and, and really Billy is at the curtain every single time. Billy is always the curtain. He's always watching. And it is, it is like very encouraging to know that, that your hard work is not, you know, does not go unseen and, and, and things like that. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. You guys killed it at the pay-per-view. I will say that you guys were the best match of hard times. Like, you know, hats oh, off yeah. to everybody oh. else in the pay-per-view. Everybody killed it. But Thunder Rosa, Allison K one was one of my favorite matches of the year. Objectively. And, yes. Yes. And then getting to watch you guys, you know, kill it again the next day, you know, for television the next week, but get, seeing you guys kill it the next day and seeing you guys, you earned that spot. You know, it wasn't just exactly. It wasn't just like, oh, well, you know what? Let's let's No, It literally was like, damn, these girls literally killed it. The card should always be like, you know, you start from maybe like the beginners and then you start seeing like it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I feel like Billy saw that it was clear that it was not going to be any bigger than Thunder Rosa versus Allison K2. And uh, it's it's very encouraging. It's very, very encouraging. Oh, that's fantastic. And it's nice to know Billy's always there and, you know, on the cur curtain and watching. Do you ever walk by him and after a match and say, Billy, this today is the greatest day I've ever known or something? Do you ever feel like, no? I swear I'd be, I'd be, I'd just be dropping, smashing pumpkin lyrics to him constantly. Listen, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> Especially like any, like, man, we have a cage match coming up. How, like, 
come on, how, how do you not like start dropping, you know, some references? But you know, one thing that I will say that is, uh, uh, Alice and I talked about this after the last, um, the last after Empower, is that it's very cool to be able to like sit down with Billy and we don't talk about music and we don't talk about wrestling. We talk about literally the most random, random things. Uh, what did we talk about last time? Like race, race cars. cars. <laughs> we talked about race cars. Billy sat down with us and started talking to us about race cars. And I feel like that's actually, I don't know, like it's 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 very it's very special because I'm sure, you know, everybody who goes up to him wants to talk about how amazing Smashing Pumpkins are, how legendary the Smashing Pumpkins are. But but being able to sit down and talk about race cars, I feel like is also very uh it, it's pretty cool. And I feel like that's actually maybe a little bit even a little bit cooler than getting to talk to him about, you know, uh bullet with butterfly wings. Yeah, no, for and sure. And educational. Yes. Because you, you learned learn, a lot. You learned a lot about race cars then. We did. <laughs> it was an awesome conversation. It was the most random conversation I've ever had in my life. But I feel like we learned so much and I'm like, dang, I want to go like watch some NASCAR now. Like <laughs> I have a new appreciation, yeah. Yeah, I'm like now now I understand. Like this is pretty awesome. I live, you know, I live in the Midwest. I there's definitely some some tracks out here that now I'm like, damn, I feel like we gotta we gotta go like everything that Billy told us, we need to go watch and like actually see it in action. So uh, maybe we've just discovered a new hobby. We'll see. There you go. You never yeah, exactly. You might you 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 you're not you don't know what might pop up then. Uh, Marty, Allison, thank you so much for taking some time today. If people want to follow the the Hex online and make sure they don't miss a thing, what's the best way to go about it? Uh, obviously, both of us are very active on our social medias. I'm a lot more active on Instagram than I am on Twitter. Um, uh, it's at, My Twitter is at Marty.B-E-L-L-E. And that's Marty with an I. Um, I'm also very active on my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Marty Bell, one word. Um, and Allison is our resident social media queen. So take it away. <laughs> Twitter and Instagram at Sienna. Don't ask me why. Uh, patreon.com slash Allison K. I also have a website, which really has all of my links. AllisonK.com is really where you can find everything. And where we- MartyBell.com, you can, good idea. MartyBell.com. There you go. Uh, yes. And I'm sure you've got links to merch and all of that off of your websites too. Yes. So, go, just... We have a brand new um, The Hex t-shirt. It is our first ever uh, joint t-shirt. It is awesome. We love it. The guys at Collar and Elbow um, hooked up and it makes it cool. time for us. And we also have some brand new championship. See, we just I just knew you were going to pick that up. We have some brand new 8x10s um, eight eight by by that will be available at shows. Uh, we've got a ton of shows together coming up, which we are very, very excited about. The Hex at the ECW Arena. Um, mm. We've got a bunch these, of shows coming up together. Yes, these are actually still available for pre-order on my website, allisonk.com. Um, the shirts are not up right now, pre-order ended, but once we get our order in, they'll be up, but sizes will be limited. But yeah, so um, exciting. definitely pick up some The Hex merch. We are very excited about it. Um, and and. Just, just keep an eye out because you you really never know where the hex is going to pop up and 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 like we said, anybody anywhere can try to come get it. Look at that exactly, and look at that they're ready. Like they could they, they could be if they were twenty four seven titles, folks. You could go for them right now. Look, they're ready. Y'all, you need bring your own. Maybe a little hard because we're in different states, but you know what? <laughs> That's fine. You that just means that you know one person in in each of, of the team has to come here. One person has to go uh, to we'll make to it work. work. We'll just, make it work. Just make it work. In case you're wondering, um, these still smell like brand new leather. That's why these do. My mouth. <laughs> and okay, also, it's fine. You know when like. I'm a very like firm believer that things are meant to be. And um, Allison and I planned our gear. We we uh, we talked about our gear months in advance. My gear maker is actually the one who came up with that design, uh, the colors, all of that. And once the titles were revealed, they matched our gear. And that was um, kismet. Is that what people say? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's karma kismet, meant to be destiny. To be. Absolutely. Manifest something. I don't know. <laughs> Allison, Marty, thank you again so much for taking the time. The Hex, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you all for tuning in and joining. You know the drill. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'm Mr. Warren Hayes. And I'll see you next time, but not with handsome belts. Bye.